Hello and welcome to this tutorial about Software Protector and in this video we're going to look at key generation and we're going to focus on identical key generation. So the reason for me to create this video is the actual application. So let's start Software Protector and if you haven't downloaded it yet the download link is provided below this video. So you can see you have a generation button and once you press it, and let's press it twice, and again, and again, you see that the keys you get are um, identical. So you can say you won't get any duplicates. However, this is only the case if you are in the same session. So basically, once you've closed Software Protector, the history of all your keys will be erased. That means, uh, once you start the application, uh, the, app the application won't know what keys it has already generated for you. And that's basically because of the fact that, uh, that um, Software Protector isn't storing anything on the computer, which is at some point good because uh, you have a bigger choice uh, when it comes to the security part, you don't need to um, share the keys and have them placed on two different locations. That's why Software Protector isn't storing the keys in in your computer. Uh, of course, what if you would like to generate keys on another computer that doesn't belong to you? Then you wouldn't like Software Protector to log the keys. And this is the case for all machines. However, as I mentioned earlier, once you've closed it, no return to the history. So the history will simply disappear. So one solution to this problem is to generate keys using the multi-key option. So basically I'm going to enter ten or thousand keys. I'm going to press generate and of course don't forget to enter your secret password here. I'm going to and I'm going to show the password for you. Uh, my password and that's the key. One, two, three. Probably not the best password. However, let's press generate. So now you're going to see a window. And um, the keys seem to be identical. You don't see, it doesn't seem to be any duplicates here and that's the case. You don't have any duplicates at all. So let's press copy and now I'm going to use a simple uh, notepad basically simple text editor to store my keys. So now I've created a list and which is which is really handy but each time you want to give your customer the um, serial key you will need to open this document copy and probably put some sort of um, a symbol near here so that you know that you've used this key already or something like that. Um, it, it works but it's probably not the best solution. However, that's how you can do uh, that's the one way of doing it in Software Protector. Um, if the, the benefit with the Software Protector is that it's actually using an API to generate your keys. That means that you can generate your keys from uh, any application, even those applications that belong to you, can be used to generate keys, which is really good. You can use um, C Sharp, .NET, Visual Basic .NET, and now if you take subsections, you can create console applications. You can cre create Windows applications. You can create um, ASP.NET applications and so forth. There are no limitations in that way. You have um, all languages that target the um, .NET framework are supported by SKGL API if the network, .NET framework version is 3.5 or above. So it's, it works basically for 4 and 4.5 for the coming versions. So yes, I mentioned this is not the best solution. 
So let's close this document. And let's press OK to close this window. Now I'm going to open Visual Studio and I'm going to open Visual Studio. Let's see which one. We're going to. Yeah, okay, well, let's open Visual Studio 2010. Just press one here, uh, once here, and it will launch. <coughs> So yes, this can be minimized. So let's press File, New Project, and um, I'm going to create the Visual Basic application, and this is going to be uh, a simple Windows form application. The name doesn't really matter here, so I'm going to press OK. The only thing I need is actually the SKGL. Um, API. And one way to get this SKGL API is to go to skgl.coteplex.com. Once you see this page, press the download button and uh, you will basically be redirected to another page and here you will get some instructions, you will get this library downloaded on your computer. However, if you already installed Software Protector, you can always find the library in the same folder as you uh, as you have you have the as your install location for software protection. So I'm going to go to to the let's see proj uh, no let's see where is it oh wait a minute I have to configure this yes and I'm going to go to uh, I'm going to right click on Windows application 1 and add a reference. Now we have to. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, no, 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 this was wrong. You have to pr press browse because that's the way to find the SKGL API. And I think I have it here. Let's see. So. SKGL 2.41 and I and I hope I've extracted extracted because it comes with the zip file so you will need to extract it to another folder but I'm going to double click here and now I've basically included the SKGL API into my project so this is basically a tutorial that you can also find on the skgl.complex.coms website and it basically shows the actual trick and we're going to use machine code locking feature and there are videos on YouTube that I've done that you can look at to find out information about machine code locking but in this tutorial we're going to look at how it might be used to generate identical keys <clears throat> So, why not just copy the code here? Copy the code and paste it into our application. So, I'm going to open the toolbox. Uh, we will need to add a button somewhere on the, pay, uh, on the screen and we're going to add a text box and that's going to be uh, in the middle of the screen somewhere so that's that's it I think yes and we can scroll this down a bit and now we're going to double click on this button to see the actual action so uh, or the actual event so now we're going to paste the code control V and this is basically it <coughs> so as you can see we declare a generate a key variable so as a new SKGL or generate don't forget the new keyword you assign a secret face or a secret, or secret password you assign the keys string and then you're doing something new you're, you're going to add a new SKGL um, uh, you're, you're going to execute the do key function on each iteration so you're going to one why every time this for will loop you're going to generate a new 
key with key ID as the ID of that key. And once this is done, we can assign textbox one. Textbox one dot text can be assigned to the keys variable. So all the all the keys inside the keys variable are going to be important imported into the uh, textbox one dot text. And this is basically it. Now let's launch the application. Now if I press the button, it will take a bit longer. And this is something to consider as well, because we have uh, uh, assigned it to generate. Let's see how much is this. Um, let's see. This is 999, so it's approximately This is a lot of keys I've I realized right now. Ah uh, yes, so this wasn't probably the good idea to generate nine nine nine. So this is one two three four five ten thousand keys. Okay, no, or a hundred thousand keys. Okay, no. Let's see. Let's solve this differently. Let's change the nine nine and remove one nine here. And now, no. Let's do it much. In a different way, because now I'm sorry, we we actually want to generate hundred thousand keys, which is a bit too much for this session. However, it works. And here are the keys. Now I've used the uh, I've changed the two to um, thousand keys, and here they are. Here we have identical keys that are going to. So let's start this from the beginning, from the entire beginning. One uh, disadvantage with text box, they are, do not allow you to have any scroll um, by default. However, I'm just going to copy one part of those keys. You can, of course, use another control control for that purpose. But I'm just going to show you and you can see each of these keys are identical. There you won't find any duplicates here and um, each of them have uh, a different ID. And why is that the case? So let's close this. Because key ID will go from 1 to 1000. And once this thing is going on you are going to set a different number or a different ID to each key, which is, like, uh, which is the point. Um, but the important thing here is you can also generate, if you want to generate a specific key with a specific ID, uh, not just, I mean, the way I did, then you can, so let's see, if we remove this key loop here, key generation loop, uh, remove it, so what we'll do now is that we're going to enter the ID we want here, and let's pretend we want to have an ID 456. Now if I launch the application, press this button, I will get a key with this ID four five six, and uh, it's five different IDs that you can have, uh, or, or no, excuse me, you can have the length of the ID can only be five digits. So that's why in the four four loop you saw that it was approximately nine nine. Let's not guess. Let's just look. One, two, three, four, five. So it's so it's a lot. It's more. Of course, it's more than ten thousand. It's one less than hundred thousand. So this was a fairly short tutorial about identical key generation, and I've mentioned in the beginning of this video that we are actually using machine locking feature to generate 
um, identical keys. So one thing I would like to uh, summarize this tutorial with is the machine key or machine code that you assign a key or basically if we phrase this differently the ID that you specify it can be maximally nine uh, uh, let's see so it might it can be five digits long number and it cannot be zero so that's a, that's the short summary of um, identical key generation and of course if you need some more information on this topic you can always visit the um, the project page where you can get information about different um, tips and tricks of how you can use the API to be as productive as possible when it comes to serial key generation so also as an end uh, as a uh, a closing part for this video I'd like to open the software protector again because that's the main application that we were working with and of course the same thing might be achieved by entering a specific code here so four five six the idea that we used before could have been entered directly into the software protector one limitation with software protector however which requires you to use the uh, API directly is that you can't have a, like a loop that will generate keys from one to a specific ID so one to thousand and you but here they will be a bit mixed although not not the same so you'll still get identical keys but they won't be uh, ordered as in this application for instance so if we would just if I would just control set and uh, show you the actual code here so you can see here it's really it's pretty clear that we are going to go from 1 to 99 but there it will be much a bit it will work a bit differently so here 456 I'll generate the key and as you can see I can only generate one key with that specific ID which is a good feature I think um, however if you would like to be able to generate keys because this actually requires a lot of code and you would ask why is this the case because shouldn't it be in software protector and uh, there is actually going to be a new product uh, which is also going to be using the SKGL API and that is serialkeymanager.com and you'll see a link below this video and it's not yet developed so it's not yet complete however it will allow you to generate identical keys and to have a, a better control and um, it also going to it is also going to solve the problem with um, key storage so what are we get the pro so the problem is what to do when the program is closed uh, and instead of storing them on the machine like I mentioned earlier in this video it's going to store them in a database which is really secure secured and which you can access from any location in the world so you'll only need an account and once you have an account you'll be able to access your keys in any part of the world so thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you got some new knowledge about this topic and that you've seen that it's this video as a trick to um, generate identical keys like in order and have a better control of key generation so thank you very much again and I hopefully you've enjoyed uh, this video and uh, there will be more videos of course but for this for time being thank you again and goodbye